There has never been a better time than now to come join the Belicio Foods team. Belicio has a new contract in place with plenty of awesome perks for their employees. From increased wages, access to the free health clinic, vacation after six months, and much more, Belicio Foods is committed to putting their employees first. For more information or to apply, visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers. Take advantage of these great new employee benefits and join the Belicio team today. Visit BelicioFoods.com slash careers to learn more. Well, happy hump day, everyone, and welcome to another edition of The Morning Show right here on Main Street TV. And, of course, Jennifer here to start off your morning with our good friend, Philip Buffington. Hello. Hello. What's the middle name? Devin. Philip Devin. Bu- Ooh, the- that sounds like you should be on a yacht somewhere. Yeah, I'm pretty fancy. You are. <laughs> Philip Devin Buffington. <laughs> The third. Esquire. (laughs) Right. (laughs) No, of course, uh, doing some news this morning, and that's always, of course, brought to you by Nia Henry, agent for Appalachia Realty. Looking to buy or sell? Give her a call, 740-418-4135. And she'll be out working, because she's always out working. Always. Whew. She's always out working. Yes. Um, So... Well, while some of us were doing, you know, things on Sunday, you were out gallivanting around. I was. The air show and some other things. But that had to have been fun. It was. Yeah. They have had. They didn't get to have it last year. They didn't get to have it in 2018. Um, so this was the 50th anniversary of the air show. <gasps> and, There's uh, a picture. We got some pretty good pictures there. Um, they had beautiful weather that day. Um, in addition to the aerial acts, um, they, they had some RC jets this year. Um, they had a That's candy drop. Super cool. Yeah. Like, look how big those things are. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think they had a rocket, a model rocket demonstration this year. I wasn't there for that. Um, there's one of the RC jets, and that thing was crazy fast. It's like a jet jet. Yeah, it has, it has an actual jet engine in it. So I know when Nick was here talking the other day, he was saying, like, it's like a jet, like yeah. a jet engine in mm-hmm. it, and it's remote control. Yep. That is insane. Yep. And Did you get to see that one perform? Yep. Yeah, that one was uh, that one was really cool to see. Does it do, like, acrobatics, or is it just, like, fly Yeah, really I mean, he, uh, he did quite a few tricks in the air, and they also always have a remote control. Uh, they, made it look, they make it look like a push lawnmower. Yes. And, yeah, there it is. The Flying Toro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's always been, uh, as long as I've covered it, over the past probably six or seven years, that guy's been there with his with his model uh, lawnmower. There it is. That's hilarious. It but they uh, always kick off the show with the screaming chicken skydiving team, and they bring the flag down to the runway. Uh, the VHS band was there. VCHS band was there. Um <clears throat> Yeah, there's the skydiver with the flag. And they always have... Insanity, uh, I tell you. Yeah. And that, that guy, I mean, landed perfectly on his mark. So I thought that was very impressive. Um, but they also had a skydiving Santa Claus for the kids. They always have a candy <laughs> drop where they just drop mass amounts of candy onto the ground. Um, Did you get any? I didn't. Oh. <laughs> I could see Philip Devin Buffington the third uh, elbow and some kids out the way. Yeah, I might. <laughs> And um, yeah, they, they and of course they always have their uh, famous barbecue chicken dinners for everybody. They kick that off at about eleven o'clock, and those are prepared courtesy of the Benton County Pilots and Boosters Association and the Fraternal Order of Eagles members. I'm just gonna tell you, if if nothing else, if you don't look at an airplane, you could just go up and get the chicken dinner and be happy. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you should see how that only shows a little section of that grill. That thing is huge. Didn't it's they like do like seventy five yards long? Two hundred and some dinners or something like that. I thought they were telling us. <sighs> I can't remember exactly how many, but it's it's a lot, and they continue on doing it throughout the day. Um, That's awesome. Yeah, and I, um. It's free. The event is free for everybody all the time. Uh, you don't have to pay. I don't even think you pay all that much for the dinners. Maybe like ten bucks. They they accept donations for parking, but you yep. don't have to pay. And then all the money that they get is just used to uh, keep up the the airport there in Benton County. And this has been going on since 1970. So I mean, it's 
it's been going on longer than what the anniversary actually is because they had to cancel, you know, a couple of times. Yeah. Um, they canceled in 2018 because they didn't have enough acts and they canceled last year, of course, because of the coronavirus. But back in action this year, hopefully they can keep it going again. Look at all. That's so fun just to see like the crowd and how yeah. everybody's so look at that little boy. He's so <laughs> excited. It was very well attended. You could tell people were uh, anxious to get back out there and see it. So it was a good afternoon. That's super good. And uh, what was your favorite? I mean, look, <clears throat> were there um, were there things that people did with like the airplanes that you were like, oh my gosh, they're gonna die? They're, and holy moly! That they, the the um, the airplane that James showed first, the Citra Bia plane. That guy is uh, Emerson Stewart from Waynesville. There that it is. plane. Yeah. That guy's always one of the most impressive, and he's always usually toward the beginning of the show. But he always does this thing at the end where, where you stand, there's a giant um, terminal at the airport. You can't really see past it when you're on the ground. Okay. So he always goes back to make his landing, but he free falls, and it makes it look like he's crashing. And then you don't hear anything. You don't hear the plane engine. You don't know if, like, the guy wrecked. He goes beyond that terminal roof. You can't see him anymore. And then all of a sudden, you just see him, like, coast in on the runway. Uh, so everybody, you could hear, you always hear people in the crowd, like, did he just crash? Is he all right? Yeah. And then it, it gets really quiet for about five minutes, and then he creeps back onto the runway. I don't know how he does it, but he does it. And I thought that was always, that's always my favorite. I like that a lot. That's so cool. Yeah. And that guy is actually the third. Emerson Stewart. Oh. The third. <laughs> His dad was a pilot, too. That um, is really He's neat. been a part of that show for a long time. Yep. And there's there's Nick pushing that plane back after uh, Emerson had finished up. That is something else. And they had a special MC this year, too, uh, Martha Lunken, who um, is a very famous pilot herself. She's been flying since the early 1960s, and uh, she married into the Lunken family. Um, she's from Cincinnati. There's actually an airport there named after the Lunken family. Um, she actually had her pilot's license revoked a couple years back. It's not the first time, but she flew under a bridge, and they claimed that that was a little too risky. So they took her pilot's <laughs> license away. I'm not sure if she has gotten them back yet, but like I said, it's not the first time she's, she's had rebel. her license revoked. She absolutely love it. Yeah, but that was cool to see her there. And uh, <laughs> yeah, so that was interesting. No, it's you know you just don't. It used to be you heard about air shows and things, but you. You know, you think about the amount of money that that it takes for people to fly these planes, mm -hmm. and the amount of skill. I mean, and, and and insanity that has to be in your brain to to take these airplanes and do the things that they that they do with them. All these flips and acrobatics and stuff. Did did have you ever heard the story that my dad and John told about the air show and the guy that crashed? I don't think so. It's not. Fu it wasn't funny then. It's funny now. <laughs> yeah. And. So I don't know the entire story, and, and John or my dad can tell you the entire thing. But basically, they were up. They used to do a remote up from the the um, Benton County Air Show every year. And I guess there was this dude, and he was, you know, up flying around. And the next thing you know, he, I don't know if he was taking off or landing. But anyway, he ended up crashing into the trees at the end of the runway. Oh, no. And... Everyone went flying down, you know, to, to look for him. And they were like, dude, there's no way. Like, it's bad. Whatever. And Dad and John are, like, in the remote unit. And so here comes this dude. And he's all, like, you know, like, disheveled and dirty and whatever. He's like, man, I just crashed the plane. <laughs> and the funny part of it was, he's like, and it's not even my plane. <laughs> oh, no. So, but everybody was, like, had taken off, like, going and looking for him. And he just, like, shows up in the mobile <laughs> unit, like. So, he wow. actually was all right. The plane was not. Yeah. And it was not his plane. So, wow. yeah. That was uh, made for, it makes for a good story. They can tell you all the details on it. But. He's probably still paying that guy back to this day. If I guess. Yeah, I hope that thing was insured <laughs> very, very well. But, um, but no, other than that, I don't think there's been that much excitement other than good excitement at the right. Benton County Air Show. And um, it is neat that it's, it's one of the biggest in, of course, the state, and it's free. Yeah, I think it's the biggest free show in the state of Ohio. 
it's pretty cool. It is. Considering the fact that we have Dayton and some of those other yeah. places that are uh, really known for planes and flying and whatever. Mm -hmm. I want to meet this lady that's the that's the the pilot character. She was a very interesting person. Uh, she they introduced she her and um, they really you know touted her up and talked <laughs> and well do. But then when she got up, she downplayed herself and made it seem like. So I actually looked her up um, after I got back this week and uh, started <laughs> to read about her. And she's a very interesting person. Uh, like had you want to no go idea. out and hang with her? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was cool. Cool. So what was your, um, so you had, you liked the um, acrobatic stuff. The, um, you didn't get to see the rockets, right? No, no. You ended up having to leave before that? I, there, I remember the last time I covered this would have been 2017. Yeah, 2017. They had a rocket car and I got to see that. And that was pretty cool. Rocket that was one car. of the, they always, they always have some special act aside from what they, you know, usually yeah. have. But that was the last um, novelty, you know, act that I got to see there. But that's pretty neat. Yeah, I think this year it was just a, a like a model rocket demonstration. But this this thing in 2017 was an actual car with a rocket attached to it, <gasps> and uh, the guy you know buckled himself in and took off in it. And I think he went the length of the runway just to see how fast he could go. It was it was insane how fast that thing was. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but no, they. Um, I guess they have a model rocket club up there. Nick was telling us when he was in here the other day. So that's oh, okay. really cool. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I don't know. I don't know anything about it, but that sounds like a pretty neat thing to be involved in. Yeah. So. All right, so Let's you see. got past the air show. Yeah. What else? You've been, you're always into something. Yeah. You I always am. have some interesting stuff. As far I know I have another, at least I have another visual aid with this, but it's nowhere near as exciting. Um, but the uh, <laughs> visual aid. The, the Ohio Redistricting Commission um, recently met, and they were tasked with formulating a 10 year plan for our. Um, for our state, they, they failed to do so. So they came up with a four year uh, map instead. And these are for your Ohio House and Senate uh, legislative boundaries. Um, so this came down to a vote. It's actually a couple weeks past when it was initially due. Um, and that was due to the fact that the Census Bureau was behind in delivering their statistics due to Correct. the coronavirus. Right. Um, but they, they got these new maps out. Um, so you can see here where Jackson and Vinton County stand respectively. Uh, for the longest time, Vinton County was actually split between two uh, Senate districts in the state. Uh, now they are one, um, one again in just the 17th Senate district for the state. So well, they're, they're no longer split in representation. That's ridiculous to yeah. split a county. I'm sorry. They, they, they still have some stupid. split counties, but uh, for now, at least for the next four to 10 years, uh, Jackson and Benton County will be. I mean, you shouldn't be able to move across the street and have a different senator or whatever. Right. That's dumb. Yeah. And Just it, saying. There were a, there was a lot of opposition, um, even when this came down to the final vote, which was five to two, with the two Democrat uh, members of the commission voting against this um, and saying that it heavily favors the Republicans. Um, but it is what it is. So, mm. as you can see uh, in the House districting map. I think Jackson's joined with Gallia and it was either Ross or Pike. Um, but yeah, everybody is whole in their representation in the local area. So yeah. And they do this as a, as a part, just so y'all understand what's going on when they do the census, they like, I know that we lost some population. We did. And so what they do is to kind of try to even the state out, then they redistrict the, the Senate, seats and, and the congressional seats to try to make the representation more fair. Now that could be argued if you're a Democrat or a Republican on how fair it is because, you know, they can't agree on whether the sky is blue or not, but, yeah. um, that's just how it is. And the, this new map likely gives the Republicans a 62 to 37 advantage in the house and a 23 to 10 advantage in the Senate, which are veto proof majorities. Um, and oh. the, the Republicans, um, to explain 
basically why this happened. Uh, they went back and looked at some of the past um, voting practices in the state, and they said that, let's see how long this went back, it said that the statewide preferences of the voters in Ohio predominantly favor the Republican candidates, adding that 13 of the 16 statewide partisan contests, which is 81% in the past decade, were won by Republican candidates. Um, so the total number of votes cast in those races show 55% for Republicans and 45% for Democrats, which is why they um, were able, they have to justify why they redistrict the, the, the maps the way they do. So sure. um, the Republicans, that was their, that was their explanation for why uh, this was done the way it was. There hasn't been a Democratic governor in the state since what, Strickland? Strickland, yeah. Was he right before... I think he was after Voinovich and before Kasich. And then there was Taft. Taft was before. Was Taft before? He was before Kasich. Before Kasich. Yeah. Okay. He was, Where he did, was before Strickland. Oh, okay. Was, Kasich think. was before Strickland? No, no, no. It was Taft, Strickland, Kasich, DeWine. Then DeWine. Okay. okay. Oh, that's right. So we went from Kasich to DeWine. I was thinking we went from Strickland to DeWine. Okay. No. Is that weird? Oh, yeah, Cowboy Bob. <laughs> Howdy, partner, with my business suit on at the Ohio We've State We've got Fair. quite a few uh, candidates this time around for governor. Speaking of cowboys. Yeah. Blind, the Blindstone guy? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I saw another name, too, recently. I want to sign. I can't remember where it was, but it was someone I hadn't even heard of yet. Is it um, a Republican or a Democratic candidate? I'm pretty sure it's a Republican considering where I saw it, which would have been somewhere between here and Benton County. I'm only guessing, but it was a name I hadn't seen before. I'm sure that'll get whittled down quite a bit. It is so interesting <clears throat> geographically in the state um, how politics are divided. Yeah. So <laughs> you go into some of these counties and you, know, you go into the Hocking Hills, for example, and all you see are Trump flags and... Some other flags that are, um, shall we say, uh, I'm trying to, to not get us taken off the air, <laughs> more colorful toward the, the current president and saying things about him and whatever. You get into some of these other counties and then you get into, you know, the more urban places and it's like the other way. So, yeah. but boy, oh boy, you, um. There's definitely some colorful yard decorations out there. Yep. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> God only knows what's in store for us in 2024. I'm just like, good grief. We'll see. At least it keeps it interesting. Hey, listen, it's never boring. No, it hasn't been boring for quite some time. And what I don't understand is we're not even into political silly season yet when it comes to like the really into the presidential races and, and the gubernatorial races and things like that. Like, just wait till that heats up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it'll be soon. It, it seems like it doesn't really waver all that much like it used to. Like, it, you wouldn't hear anything about. Oh, there would be nothing. No. Else. Now there's just flags and signs and whatever. It's like they didn't take them down. Yeah. Billboards. <laughs> yep. It, it almost never goes away now. Oh boy. Um, I'll, I'll move on so that we don't get in any <laughs> so trouble. We don't get, would you like to talk about religion next? <laughs> yes, please. Um, we had a, a little bit. I won't say it was controversial, but it was. It was brought to the attention of the uh, Wellston School Board recently um, during their September meeting, which was just a couple of weeks back. Um, it was during the board comments section of the meeting. Uh, Gretchen Crabtree, who's always pretty outspoken during that portion of the meeting, um, at the very end of her comments, brought up the fact that there had recently been an article published in the Columbus Dispatch about a Wellston student who was speaking out against um, mental health issues and um, uh, struggles with addiction. Um, and really, the the whole point of the article was to talk about how there was a lack of resources in the area. Sure. And, you know, the stigma attached to having issues like that, especially when you're, you know, a teenager um, dealing with all the things that a typical teenager would have to deal with anyway. But what everyone took issue with was the fact that the dispatcher didn't even reach out to the district for any comment. 
they, they spoke to this young student who I believe is still in high school. And, you know, they did a really sprawling piece. It was over 2,000 words. Uh, it was a very important subject, and they weren't meaning to take anything away from the student for what she did. They touted her bravery and, you know, gave kudos for the fact that she was willing to talk about something that usually is such a, you know, stigmatized Absolutely. topic. Absolutely. But they, they didn't appreciate the fact that they weren't even asked for a comment. They weren't even told that this was happening. And it really shed a bad light on the district in general and even included some misinformation, according to the board um, members and, and Superintendent Bach. Apparent, well, and I know this is true, too, because I looked the article up, but it, it, it claimed that in 2019 or 20, I'm sorry, 2018, that a student at Wellston High School had overdosed in the bathroom. And they were quick to say that that was not the case. It was a, a, a separate, different medical emergency and that it was taken care of immediately. Um, but it's kind of important as a journalist. Um, I'll say that I, I, too, think it's very important that the student spoke up. And there are definite, you know, holes in the system. And the school district officials were not disputing that fact. They were saying that there definitely are you know, more problems in the area than there are counselors to deal with them. Sure. But they also pointed out that, you know, there are a lot more services available now than there were, say, you know, when I was in high school or 25 years ago when some of these teachers first started. Um, they were they were quick to say, Belinda Dixon, who's been a teacher for, you know, a quarter century and is the president of the teachers uh, union there in, in the city of Wellston, said, comparatively between when she first started and now it's night and day she can have somebody there within you know that same school day they have <clears throat> licensed counselors in almost all the buildings they partner with integrated services with hopewell behavioral health um, so they have a lot more avenues to take now i okay. suppose but it wasn't i i will say that i don't agree with as a journalist, not reaching out to a school district to get at least their side of the story because it paints a, a pretty bad picture. And they're not disputing the fact, like I said, that there are problems, but it's still, it's not, it's not a fair representation of the whole story when you only get one person's opinion. Well, Phil, let's just be honest. <clears throat> That's what the big city news does when they come down here. Yeah. They go find, you know, some cabin in the holler somewhere yeah. where there's no indoor plumbing or something and then that's take everyone. a picture of that. And that's how and this is why I'm so critical of the media covering our area, because, you know, southern Ohio, like, like we exist south of 70. Like mm -hmm. there are people down here and, and we're not all, you know, idiots. Yeah. I mean, could be argued some of us, but <laughs> like no, seriously, and and it that this is my it been my argument ever since is so the dispatch goes out, they do an article basically to make fun of our area. Mm -hmm. They're 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 passive aggressively making fun of our area mm -hmm. again mm -hmm. for like the fiftieth thousandth time yeah. because if they cared, they would take the time to reach out and cover both sides of the story, and again. Kudos to this child for for speaking up because man, that would be a hard thing to do. Yeah, uh, and and that's awesome. But um, this is what they do, and it's so frustrating. It, it, I can only imagine how frustrating it is for the school officials because they are actively trying their best to make things as comfortable and <clears throat> as accommodating as possible for their for these kids every day. It's not and it, this in doing what they did makes it seem like, you know, these problems exist and they exist because these people choose not to do anything about it. That's not the case. I mean, there's only so much a superintendent or a board member or a teacher or a guidance counselor can do in a given day. And I don't think that anybody's being cold to anyone with any of these issues. I mean, there might be some instances where things were handled the best way possible, but I really don't think that it was anyone's intention in the Wellston City School District to just completely ignore somebody's health issues or mental health issues or what have you. Well, let's be honest. Could they not write the same article about uh, Dublin I'm sure, or, yeah. you know, Cleveland or anywhere else for that matter? And, and um, 
So that's that's what's frustrating about yeah. it. And yeah. I'm sure that if they would reach out to uh, a larger school district like that in you know a more populated county, that they would have had ample opportunity to tell their side of the story. And um, all the board seems to be in agreement that something needed to be done. I mean, I don't think they're going to go up and protest outside of the state house or anything, but I think that Gretchen Crabtree expressed her intent to write a letter to the editor of the dispatch. I think that's fair. I'm to at least let it be known that they didn't appreciate the fact that they were just looked over. Um, now, again, if they didn't comment, then you deserve what you get. Right. But yeah, I, I, I know in working with these people for as many years as I have, that they wouldn't have gone quiet on this topic. Sure. And I'm sure that they would have gladly admitted that there are issues that are beyond their power to control. But I think it would have been nice for them to be able to have that platform um, to, to defend themselves, unfortunately. Well, and offer up, I don't know, I, I liken this to somebody that's very quick to point out a problem, but never, you know, don't come yeah. to me with a problem, come to me with a solution. Mm -hmm. Like, you can come to me with a problem and a solution, but, you know, let's not just complain and then not give an alternative or, or a solution to the issue. Yeah. So. Agreed. But Do you want to talk about religion now? <laughs> that's not a topic I think you want to address. <laughs> but no, yeah, that's a rough one to take as far as, you know. I've, the, been, I've been trying to, to keep up with it, too, and I'll, um, I'll probably get a hold of Miss Crabtree soon to see if she has followed through with that. Okay. Um, and We'll let you know. Yeah, we will let you know. And I think the only other story that I have... Um, pertains to the Jackson County Board of Elections. And right now, we have both the director and the deputy director preparing to leave after decades of service. Crazy. Um, to the, yeah, to the overall voting process here in the county. They've, uh, I know at least uh, Cheryl Lewis Browning has been, who is the deputy director, she's been involved at least as a poll worker since before 1985. Um, then she came on as a seasonal worker and I think has been in the deputy director's position since, I want to say, around oh, it was June 1, 2007, when she replaced Maxine Robbins when she retired, who had been there for quite a while yep. as well. I remember that. Yep. And um, let's see. I, I, I know they're running a legal right now in the paper to seek these replacements. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to, and it wasn't planned. They didn't plan on, you know, Joanne and, and Cheryl didn't get together and, and planned to retire at the same time. Cheryl had actually had initially planned to step down at the start of next year. But then when she learned that Joanne was leaving as well, they decided to um, stick around at least through the first election next year, the, the primary. That makes sense. And then, and then help out because, you know, typically, so you have a director and a deputy director of the board of elections. One's a Republican, one's a Democrat, mm -hmm. whomever is in office in the governor's seat, is the director, yeah. that party, and then the deputy director. So there's been times where Cheryl's been the director and vice versa because Democratic governor versus Republican governor. But um, typically, you know, you would have people come in. One would still be there and help the yeah. other one along, yeah. like training or, or whatever. And this is everybody's leaving at the same time. And um, I don't know. So someone asked me this question the other day, and I do not know. Are there other employees in the office that could step up? Like, are there other full-time employees in that office, or is it just those two? I as, don't know. As far as full-time goes, I'm not really sure. I know that they do have, <clears throat> like, the seasonal workers that, that like they, they both have been in the past before they stepped into their respective roles. Um, I'm not really sure. I know that they, they have... Of course, the poll workers that just work during the election season. Yep. Um, these seasonal workers, I'm not sure exactly how many hours they get. If they're, cons I think they're just considered part time. Um, I think for the most part, it's just the director and the deputy director, and of course, they work at the discretion of the board. Um, sure. So, yeah. Um, it's wild. I'm not really sure, but. They they're giving plenty of time. Like they, I think they're accepting applications to the end of next month. The so October. Yes. Yeah. Through the end of October, they're accepting applications for director and deputy director. Then, 
these people, whoever they may be, they won't actually start until the 1st of February next year. And they'll work for 20 weeks uh, for a training with yep. Cheryl and Joanne. And I think that starts out at, that'll be like a 40 hour per week, $16 an hour, I believe is the starting wage. And then beginning July 1st, the pay rate for each position will increase. That will be at the discretion of the board of elections members. Um, and then that becomes a salaried position where, you know, there's no overtime pay, no comp time, anything like that. Um, of course, during elections, you're probably going to be working a whole <laughs> lot more than 40 hours a week. Oh, yeah. Um, but there will probably be down times where you won't have to be in there as, uh, as much. And there's some benefits and things that go along with that that make it a, a, a nice perk. Right. And I mean, it seems it seems to be a pretty nice gig if you're interested in the election process because these these women have both been where they where they are now for quite some time, yeah. And they've been you know they've been a staple uh, in the voting process here in the county, so it, it will be a, some pretty big shoes to fill uh, when they leave. Oh yeah, well, and I guess if you want to be in politics, but not have to deal with as much of the BS of politics yeah. and more of the, just the legality of running an election properly. Um, it would be a pretty fascinating job. Yeah. Well, it's like, for example, in um, the city of Jackson, where we had a, a councilman pass away mm -hmm. um, and it was fairly close to the election. You know, the questions were, how does that whole thing work? Does does a new person get put on the ballot because this person had already, right. you know, put... So, like, these are all things that everything is a case-by-case -case basis. Mm -hmm. You, That's their job to figure that out, yeah. so... And the, we just had a councilman in Wellston step down, uh, Wayne Cosper, and it was close enough to the election where he had already had his petition validated. He was going to be on the ballot. There's not enough time to even get his name taken off the ballot, I don't believe. So that's a whole other mess, yeah. like, issue. Yeah. So there's always going to be, you know, something that pops up. It's going to keep it interesting. And, yeah. you know, as far as a potential candidate goes, <clears throat> I have this story written. We haven't run it yet, I don't believe. But I talked mostly to, to Cheryl. And we'll talk to Joanne and Cheryl both uh, a lot more and, and a lot more detail closer to when they're going to actually leave. But just to get an idea of what type of people they're seeking, you know, what would be, you know, a good attributes to have. And <clears throat> Cheryl pointed out that, you know, election spirit, election experience is important. And, you know, a general interest in, in the process is important, sure. along with computer and people skills. But she said the most important thing uh, that a person should be able to do is to work across those political party lines, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. And, you know, to come in and be bi bipartisan and willing to work across lines. Because as Cheryl pointed out to me uh, while we spoke over the phone, she knows of instances in boards of elections throughout you know, the state where the director and the deputy director don't necessarily see to eye to eye and don't work too well together. And you're taking an already stressful environment and making it that much more stressful by not being able to coexist as a Republican and then as a Democrat and working together. Because like you said, the important thing is not the politics of it all. Uh, it's yeah, the that's, I mean, I guess that that is the the cool to me it's the opposite like it's the cool thing that you that you should be able to put those parties aside and everybody work together and not like be so sucked into whether you're a democrat or republican absolutely and she and she even said that she she feels as though they did a pretty amazing job of working together over these years and that she couldn't imagine you know a, a better partner to have and she also couldn't imagine you know not being able to get along with your your partner there in the office. Well, that's right. And as I mentioned, you know, <clears throat> these two have flip flopped back and forth a few times because yeah. depending on, you know, who was governor at the time. And she also wanted to, to give kudos to uh, Jim Milliken, who was the director for quite a while before he stepped up and to the regional li liaison yep. position for, uh, for secretary of state, John Husted, uh, who was the secretary of state, John Husted back then. Um, she said she learned a great deal about the election process from Jim and, uh, there again, Cheryl, Democrat, Jim was a Republican, and they had that good working relationship That's together right. despite the fact that they don't affiliate with the same political party. Yep. And I have a million other things I could say, but these are the ones I picked out for today <laughs> to harp on. So I have kind of a fun story. Yeah, we love fun stories. Fun. Uh, do you remember a while back, Jen, we talked about 
funny minor league baseball team name. <laughs> we did. Oh my god, were you here that day? I know. Oh man, there were some hoots. <laughs> so uh, one of the things I think we maybe mentioned then was that the Charleston minor league baseball team had recently lost their major league affiliation and had joined an independent league. And when that happened, they decided that they were going to rebrand the team. Well, yesterday, the team formerly known as the West Virginia Power unveiled their new name, the Dirty Birds. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my gosh. So the West Virginia Power are now the Charleston Dirty Birds. Uh, And the name is an homage to back in the day, you know, how coal mines... They would send canaries into coal mines to make sure that there wasn't like dangerous gases. And oh, stuff like that. okay. Yeah. So that is where the name <laughs> is derived from. I mean, it's it's kind of catchy. Yeah. Should name so they played the dead double, canaries. So the dead- <laughs> they played a they played a doubleheader last night. In the first game of the doubleheader, they played as the Charleston Charlies, which was like the minor league baseball team in Charleston like years and years ago. Gotcha. And then after the first game, they went back into the dugout or clubhouse, locker room, whatever, and reemerged as the Charleston Dirty Birds. The Dirty the Birds. Time. Wow. The Dead Canaries. The Dirty Canaries. <laughs> the Dead Canaries. The Gassy the, Canaries. Yeah. The Dead Canaries <laughs> didn't have quite the same thing <laughs> as the Dirty Birds. <laughs> I don't know. I can see it. Like, catching on, like, let's go birds or, I don't know, dirty birds. There, there have been so many changes to the minor league teams. Like, I don't think the Mudville Nine even exists anymore, do they? Or the, uh, there was another one, too. The, uh, the Clippers still around? Yeah, the Clippers, yeah, the Clippers, Clippers play. still around. Yeah, my, minor league baseball has definitely changed a lot. Because, I mean, major league baseball has just made their minor league system so much smaller. Yeah. I remember always being a fan of the Mudville Nine, um, and I, I think I still have one of their hats, actually. But I don't think that they, I don't think they still well, those exist. Are the Toledo Mud Hens. That's not what you're. No, there was an actual team called the Mudville Nine. I don't remember where they were, but um, we it's an homage it to that uh, poem, the Mighty Casey, Casey at the Bat. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. is that that's the team in that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, yeah, I I doubt that they exist, but yeah. who knows. I always thought that was a really They always cool talk team. about it in center field, too, the song. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. So there you go. Um, well, we could go over the weather. How's that? Because we haven't done that yet. And it's flipping fantastic. So we'll just go with that. Uh, so, yeah, it looks pretty good for the next several days, all the way through the weekend. Um, Pretty much highs of 77 and lows around 50. So there you go. And some sunshine. (laughs) A little bit of rain popping back into the forecast at the beginning of of your work week. But other than that, it is, wow, that is just a perfect fall weather forecast. I'm ready for this, too. I I don't want to be hot anymore. You know, I've talked with so many people that are just like, bring on fall. Yeah. And I guess when you live in a place like we do where there are four seasons, well, there's supposed to be four seasons Mm -hmm. and you you grow up with that. You look forward to those four seasons and, you know, it would be a little bit hard as far as I'm concerned to live somewhere where you don't get to experience those seasons as much as we all gripe and complain about winter and and whatever. But I like the summer for a while. I love the spring, love the fall, like, but then after a while you're over it yeah especially when it's been you know 90 degrees since may it just it seems like it goes it drags on and so does winter winter drags on too but i'm more equipped to deal with the cold than i am the heat and i can't stand it yeah i know like i feel like (laughs) i love that you're just so honest about that but no i i feel like the older i get like i was always a summer person man just like no matter what, I was sitting outside or whatever, and now, I and I don't know if it's from having, like, being at the restaurant where, you know, you're in a hot kitchen all the time or whatever, but I don't want anything to do with hot nope. anymore. Like, It's much easier to get warm than it is to cool yeah. off because you can't walk around, like, naked outside, so. <laughs> I mean, you could. Uh, yeah, you probably, <laughs> yeah. But. If you wanted to, you know, start some controversy. <laughs> 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not suggesting it for anything. <laughs> hey, uh, dog the bunny bounty hunter is in the is in the news. I saw that. Yeah, yeah he's out. That dude looks uh, like a cartoon character. I know, like he's a real life <laughs> like cartoon character. Yeah, yeah, like you cannot make him up. And everybody's like, finally. There's going to be some justice in this case. Like, I know. Every, no one doubts this guy at all. It's just like, it's over with now. It's He'll be like, found in within days. Dog's on the hunt. <laughs> He's going to find him. The kid's going to turn himself in promptly. Yes. Uh, but no, Dog the Bounty Hunter Chapman is investigating a tip um, about this Brian Laundry uh, dude that, that obviously was the boyfriend <sighs> of, of the girl, uh, young lady that disappeared and is now, uh, unfortunately, was found dead. But he's got all kind of tips now. And, of course, as soon as he inserted himself into this case, like, the tips just started just going crazy. And they're saying that, and, and th they have um, actually proven this as of this morning, that, and he got a tip about this a while ago, that the parents and this kid went to a t campground in Florida. And... It was 75 miles away from where they live. And so that's where he's kind of focusing right now. Because okay. he's like, wait a minute. And they have video of them all three going into this campground. But then they have video of only two people leaving. So uh, they're like, okay. And it's like, well, did he leave with someone else? Was it him and someone else that left? Like, what? what is going on? Of course, the parents aren't talking. And the kid has disappeared off the face of the earth. His parents said he went hiking and hasn't returned, um, which everybody is like, either he, he went out hiking in this, it, it's, a, it's a very, very, um, like, uh, Everglades-ish, like, uh -oh. kind of place full of snakes and alligators mm -hmm. and all kind of stuff like that. Um, be very, very uh, treacherous to actually hike and survive. But he's a survivalist, so they're like, oh, well, you know, he could just be out doing his thing. But that was, like, over a week ago. Mm. Or he could have gone out there and, you know, he could be dead. Or he's on the lam somewhere. But the whole fact of the matter is no one knows where this kid is. He came back. He goes on a trip with his girlfriend and comes back without her. And nobody seemed to think that was weird. So right. other than, you know, everyone in the country... Except for him and his parents. I just, <laughs> so, it's not... People handle things differently, I suppose. But I would like to think that if I were out like, and my girlfriend went missing, I would not leave until... like. Wouldn't you think you'd be like calling everybody yeah, that you could crazy. call? I don't, I don't know, man. I, like I, five minutes into it. Right. Not yeah. like, oh, a week later I'm going to come home with her van, mind you. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. So they're, they're like, I think it's $170,000 reward right now for information I think I saw yesterday. It it's crazy. Me. Like, it was the family got together, uh, Gabby's family, uh, some of their neighbors. Um, I can't remember who else, but there were, like, businesses involved. But it's like $170,000 oh, reward for information. And it's um, not even information that leads to, you know, the ultimate arrest of this kid. It's just information Information. In um, so dog says for sure they know three people came in on the sixth to this campground and two people left on the eighth. Um, and the parents say they don't know where he is. I'm sure. I, I just wonder why dogs on the prowl. You better look <laughs> out, dude. I'm telling you. I mentioned this to Jen uh, yesterday. I think it was. I saw Dog the Bounty Hunter in Cincinnati one time. Really? He was at this little like patio cafe thing at one of the nice downtown hotels. And he said something about a van a second ago. See, of course, he's got like this big like tour bus thing, like with his face on, you know, inside. Of it. <laughs> and it's like parked right out in front of this fancy hotel. Did he have on like his garb, like the dog no. garb? Well, well, I don't know. He had like. I, I, it was a few years ago. I don't remember exactly what he was wearing, but it was Was Baby new. Lisa and Leland and who? What are the other people? It's like he was by himself when we saw him, or the people that he was with were not like memorable. Not his. Uh, like, well, the reason the reason I remember so well, like his wife died, right? Yeah. Oh, and she died. Was, I didn't and this know was that. like not that long Beth? after yeah. that happened. Yeah, she died a long time ago. I don't pay yeah. attention to things. Yeah, <laughs> and she like had it. a hor just, horrific yeah. battle with cancer. It was uh, really I sad. That was kind of in the news. 
around the yeah. same time that we saw him. Oh, no. But he had that big bust there in his face. Well, it's super controversial right now because he's getting married, remarried. Uh, and some of the kids are invited and some of the kids aren't. And, you know, he's got, like, an army of children. And I read an article the other day where there's just all this big controversy about it. But So was he, like, invited what? into this thing? Or did he just, like, show up and be like, I got this? I think he pretty much inserted yeah, himself into it. I think he just saw it. an opportunity to, like, get back on the news. To become relevant again. Yeah. Wow, good for him. <laughs> like, all yeah. the girl died? I'm all over this. But is it weird that people are just like, yeah, dogs on him, Like man. I said, like, nobody ever, no, I haven't seen the first thing, like, what is this guy doing? It's just, everybody's like, oh, well, Well, finally, thank God. It's going to be taken care of. Like, <laughs> Forget the FBI, fingers, dogs on it. Yeah, dude's covered in leather and feathers. So. <laughs> he's got Leather and feathers got and the biggest mullet you've ever seen. <laughs> In every 90s kid's dad's sunglasses he's got. <laughs> hey, I, I'm all about it. I mean, he's like, kind of reminds me of like cartoon character, like the Tiger King, <laughs> minus the getting arrested and, and yeah. whatnot. Although he's gotten arrested yes. a couple times, yeah, too. Yeah, it's a matter of time before. <laughs> yeah. It, it turns out he's running a like illegal tiger <laughs> ring or something like that. <laughs> yeah, he's that caliber of guy, unfortunately. Well, I'm going to tell you what, I'm sure he misses Beth, because Beth just knocked the tar out of everybody. Yeah. And she was rough. Yeah, she was. I can't believe I didn't know she died, because yeah. I used to be a pretty big uh, pretty big dog uh, down at her I watch would, Is that even while. still a show? I have no idea, but I sincerely doubt it. This is probably his first step toward uh, yeah. bringing that stuff back. Toward stardom back. again. Yeah. yeah, I'm with you. I he think said What he said, like two weeks that he'll have... Like a good lead on this kid. So what? You, I mean, he's yeah, he's claiming all kind of stuff. So it's not like he's found like any high-profile people either. It's just like random people in Hawaii that he found a couple times. So I don't know what correct his and had credentials a show about are. It. He did find some drug dealer. That's when he got arrested. Some drug dealer or something they had down in guns Mexico. And stuff. I th yeah, it had something to do with like him crossing. I think the border to oh, go. Okay. It was frowned upon by the Mexican government. I'm pretty sure, <laughs> if I remember properly. <laughs> Dog, the bounty hunter did something that was frowned upon. That was oh, frowned Lord. upon. Oh, shoot. Go get him, dog. That's right. I mean, I'm all for it, man. Somebody needs to find this kid. So did you know, guys so. know that uh, today is the 50th anniversary of Disney World? No. In Disney Florida. World? In Florida. Okay. In Florida. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm trying to. I'm I, I started talking about here. Where, okay. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> We're so prepared. Yeah. The park, <laughs> the park was announced uh, just not long before Walt Disney died. That's true. And he died about like two months into the planning. And he didn't get to see it open. Oh, his brother, man. brother Roy finished, yep. you know, the planning and the construction stuff like that. Walt's big thing that he wanted to see is what eventually became Epcot. Yeah. He had this whole vision for like a city of the future, mm -hmm. and like. Orlando gave them like free range to do like anything they wanted, like permits and things like that. Like if they wanted to have like a nuclear powered, you know, <laughs> like they whatever. just were like, yeah, you like go they for were it. allowed to do it. Like they didn't have to get like special permits or anything. They treated That's it like scary. it was, yeah. Is it's, that? Crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Like they were like, sure, you can do whatever you want. Wow. Epcot has always been. When I was little, we used to go to Disney a lot, but um, Epcot was always one of my, was my favorite, I think, because I just always liked science and, mm -hmm. and I just always thought, although some of the, as James said, you know, futuristic stuff of mm -hmm. Epcot mm -hmm. back when I was a little girl is, well, kind of all exists now. Yeah. So yeah. If you think about it. So they're having to continually change and, and whatever, but. It's funny you brought that up because I just saw a story not long ago about how, you know, Walt Disney had his body frozen or whatever in that cryogenics procedure. And it's too, I think it's now or very close to the time when he had requested to be reanimated. reanimated. Yeah. So he might get to see Epcot. You never know, but I freaking doubt it. I'm glad. I mean, I'm glad that the guy had the money to do all this stuff, but. Wait, how do you reanimate someone that dies? He, he wanted to be frozen in the event that they could bring him back in the future when they had, 
you know, the ability to do that, I guess. I don't, I don't know. know. Why. I mean, I guess it's not all that. I mean, we'll see. I, yeah. I hope that there's not like a zombie Walt yeah. Disney here I, in a couple yeah. of years. Dude, we'll if it's like, like Weekend at Bernie's, I'm going to. Like <laughs> they got Nixon in there too. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Ted Williams. Yeah. Uh, but so Magic wow. Kingdom opened on October 1st, 1971. Um, it has grown to 77,000 employees. Oh my gosh. And has helped make Orlando the most visited place in the United States during the pandemic. Wow. I could see that. And there's a nice article here. This is on NPR's website about a handful of employees that have worked there the entire 50 years. Wow. Oh, really? Yeah. That's interesting. It is. So how much older is the one in California, like I wonder? 10 years 10 older. 10 years, okay. Yeah. Approximately. The funny, do you ever read, like, occasionally they'll pop up on, like, my news feed or whatever, these rando, like, people that are the ones that, like, dress up as... The stories of the people that like dress up as the characters and stuff, and the stuff that happens to them. It sounds awful. I, it just seems like that's the worst job ever. Yeah, I couldn't imagine. Like, could you imagine being in Florida in that heat in like no. a huge costume? Like, especially Mickey Mouse costume is black, so it's going to be even hotter right. than that. Yeah, I, I think bet there's when, heat I think once you have that many layers of foam, it doesn't matter what color it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're going to be white and it'd still be miserable. Oh my gosh. <sighs> be a good uh, way to keep the weight off, I guess. Yeah. They told a story uh, on the radio this morning. I don't see the exact numbers here in this article. But when they opened the park for the first time, they. Yeah, okay, here it is. So when they. They had a big parade and they made a huge like Disney band made up of like all the students from like the local high school bands. Yeah. So they had over a thousand people in this marching band and it, they like the back of the band was literally like a quarter mile away from like the director. <laughs> so they had so they had directors on top of the buildings all throughout the parade route so that the kids in the back could that still would make see. sense because they they would be completely <laughs> off. They yeah. could be completely off kilter. Yeah, yeah, from... I mean, they probably couldn't even hardly hear the people. Right, right. right. They have no idea. Yeah. I would have been definitely not even playing. I'll just bet. pretending. Yeah. yeah, oh, yeah. You're just walking. <laughs> You're just walking and waving. Well, just owning thousand, that. Thousand member band. And a third of them were doing what I just said. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> it's like, I don't remember what we That's were even doing. That's still like 850 people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> No, I always, I always thought that uh, about how awful that would be to like be the Disney character or whatever. I don't know. There's probably some people that like really enjoy it, but so yeah. I, Have you guys seen the Gaston at Disneyland? Mm -hmm. You know, Gaston's like the big muscly guy from Beauty and the Beast. Oh, okay. okay. That dude, the dude. I mean, who knows if it's still the same actor? But this guy just went like completely viral a few years ago because he was just so good at it. But that's like he's just like a guy. He's not wearing like a big foam suit or anything. Oh, he's, like a big huge guy. So he he's just great. a big dude. But yeah, he was great, and he'd like you know do like bodybuilding poses with people and stuff like that. And he was really funny. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. Well, when I was in Key West, I met one of the guys. He waited on us that uh, played Big Bird. Really? Yeah. Was he huge and tall? He was yeah, very tall, okay. very tall and thin. Like the real, like the main Big Bird? I'm blanking yeah. on his name right now. Uh, Carol Spinney? I don't know. I don't remember what his name well, was. He, Carol Spinney was the main actor that played Big Bird. Was he? he? Did it for like 50 years. Yeah, because he I went don't to Jim Henson's uh, funeral. Yeah, they made a documentary about him really recently. Called, I think it's called I Am Big Bird. Okay. It's really, really good. Yeah. I don't know. See if that yeah. person lives in Key West. Because that guy came and like sang a song and like. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he, like he was one of like the original like Henson performer. He's of course retired now. Yeah, I think he's still alive. I think he is too. Yeah, I think I saw the same documentary yeah. you're talking about. The documentary about. is really good. Yeah, it do was. you know how the big bird suit works, Jen? I do like how the not know. Puppeting. So of course I'm off camera, so it doesn't do any good to me. <laughs> Phil can mirror what I'm doing. <laughs> so you're in the big bird suit, right? And you're holding one hand up like this, <laughs> and that's Big Bird's mouth. Okay. So you're operating Big Bird's yeah. mouth like this. So your other arm is here, and it's one of Big Bird's arms. 
And then big birds. So arm. we're 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 at right. this right <laughs> now. Like Just this. to let you know what right. James is doing. And so this arm has a string on it that goes across and is connected to Big Bird's other arm. So when you move your so hand you're... like this, Big Bird's hand goes like this. And when you move your hand like this, Big Bird's hand goes <laughs> like this. So this is how you puppeteer Big Bird, going like this. You got to be way coordinated. That's <laughs> yeah. like chewing gum and walking. It. It's like... <laughs> and you can't you can't see what he's doing either. Well, that would be tough. Yeah, that would be very tough. And he and it's him in the suit, talking and singing, doing that, doing all of doing, this, yeah, and not really <laughs> being able to see. No, thank you. Yeah, I hope he got did. paid a whole lot of money. I bet he did. Yeah, I bet he did. I think he's doing all right. That's funny. Um, so you want to hear a funny story? I do. So, Jamie and I, uh, I made him take me to the Newport Aquarium over the weekend. Okay. He made him. <laughs> oh, I made him. Like, he was not going. And yeah. I asked very nicely, and he... <laughs> obliged. Obliged, yes. So, anyway, we're walking through the aquarium, and all of a sudden, we get to this place where there's, like, there's, like, a kid, like, kind of playland in the middle of it. And there's all, it's like the frog room. There's all these little tiny, which is really creepy. All these little tiny frogs are about that big. And um, they're all like poisonous and stuff. And they're all super colorful. Yeah. And they're running around and you're like, oh my gosh. Like, And they said that they're using, they're trying to work with their poison as a painkiller for people. Because huh. it's like 100 times stronger than morphine. Oh. Like what they can extract, extract from them. Anyways, I'm walking down the ramp. Jamie's in front of me, so I know it's not him. And all of a sudden, somebody gets a, <laughs> somebody gets a handful of Jen's rear end. Oh, boy. <laughs> I mean, like, a <laughs> handful of Jen's rear end. So I'm like, and I look, and it's this little boy. <laughs> <laughs> he, he goes, hey, 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 hey. Like that. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> and all I could do was just bust out <laughs> laughing. And I'm like, Jamie, that kid just grabbed my rear end. And he was like, what? And I'm like, I swear. And he thought, that little kid thought it was the funniest thing ever. I thought you were going to be like, he thought it was his mom and like well, ran into you on accident or something. But and then, no, I thought so, you were going to say it was Big Bird. If it was Big Bird, that'd be even better. But no, I was like, and then I got to thinking, I wonder if he thought I was his mom. I don't really know. It would be probably less, um, you know, bother it would bother me less if he did think it was my father from yeah anyway so yeah jen got attacked in the in the middle of the newport aquarium by like a four-year-old wow sexual assault 101 i mean somebody could have I mean, <laughs> in today's world it wouldn't surprise me if somebody didn't report it yeah pressure but, just cancel that four-year-old kid before yeah right gets to start just, you're done out yeah you're gone go but. in the corner <laughs> It was a pretty cool place, though. I'd, I'd never been there before, so. I, I don't think I've been there either. It's one of the things I'm planning to take park or two, maybe when the weather gets bad again. Yeah, and they are open, I didn't know this, like, every day. Really? 365. Christmas Day, they're open. Wow. Yep. Um, but they have sharks. They had, oh my gosh, they had this these white alligators. Hmm. And when I say alligators, I don't mean like alligators, like, you know, alligators. I mean like alligators, like 12 foot long white alligators. So, and there's like a sign I was reading about them. It just says they don't, they can't live in the wild because they can't camouflage themselves. Yeah. And um, the white does not protect their skin. Mm -hmm. So they're, they get burnt and all kinds of stuff. So anyway, they're living in there. Huge. So this alligator, we're like, oh, cool, white alligators. And this one, he just, like, comes up, and he's just giving us the stink eye. And I mean, walks right up to the glass, and you're like. <laughs> and, like, it was, like, one of those where I encounter a snake in the wild. Like, I couldn't move. I'm like, is this thing going to get me or what? Through the glass, you know, like, I'm sure. I'm the not the first so. person that, that the alligator's done that to. <laughs> as far as I was concerned, he was plotting on how to eat me. I don't I'm know. I'm sure he was. But, uh, yeah, it was, they were, but they were huge. Could you imagine how hungry that alligator would be in the wild, though? Like you said, how hard would it be for him to sneak up on anything? Oh, it would yeah. be impossible. <laughs> Poor guy. 
Well, I'm glad that they're finding these creatures and keeping them safe. Yeah, I i don't know. I, I was talking to my mom about it. I was like, I'm a little torn about these aquariums and zoos and things like that just because. But, yeah. I mean... I assume that they're living living a good life. Well, at least I like to think so anyway. Like I've only been to the Columbus Zoo, but it seems like they have like a pretty good thing going up there. That's one of the nicest zoos in the in the country. So, yep. I'm I'm sure those animals are living pretty well, but I'm sure there are like do you remember Noah's Ark for instance? <laughs> it was right unique. here in old Jackson County. Yeah. That's where I got bit by the emu. There was there was I'll like never a, the I'll cage never for the bear, it. it was like as big as this table, and the bear could just like get up and stand up and turn around, and like that was his life. Yeah, like, that was depressing. But th- I think our it's, zoos here in Ohio have a pretty good reputation. Yeah, it's I don't know, it's just wild to just literally. And yet, and you think, where do they get those fish? Like, where does someone go out and go fishing and like <laughs> bring that fish back to the aquarium and throw it in? Like, where does it come from? And I mean, there's some fish in that aquarium that are like the size of this room. Yeah. Yeah. And you're like, oh my gosh. Terrifying. And who knows what is, uh, you know, in the oceans that we haven't, that we haven't seen yet. Because it seems like every time they go down, they find some like 50 new species of whatever. And they're all creepy and like, look like aliens. They do. Or dinosaurs. We know more about like the moon than we do what's in the ocean. I find that creepy. It is. Could be anything down there. There could be. So all I can know tell you is if I encountered some of the things that I encountered saw at the aquarium in the ocean as I was swimming, uh, that would be the end for me. Oh, yeah. Like, no, thank you. <laughs> yeah. The ocean yeah. freaks me out. Yeah. So It's beautiful. I like to look at it. That's about it. Yeah, especially since when we went down um, to Florida over the summer and we stood on that pier and we were only like 30 or 40 feet, you know, onto the pier there were huge like baby sharks down there like within pretty close range to people that were out there swimming around like you're like i don't know if those are the kind of sharks that eat people or not right. but i don't want to find out but there were also a lot of dolphins and stuff so that made me feel a little bit better because they'll at least keep the sharks yeah. at bay but <laughs> i don't know i didn't get back in after that that was the end of me getting in the ocean i got to touch a shark at the aquarium really yeah mm-hmm. It was kind of fun. There's a, you can pet the stingrays, you can pet the sharks. I didn't want to pet the stingray. I was afraid it was going to jump out and, Steve you know, Irwin Steve, you? Steve Irwin me. Yeah, definitely. I Those won't trust the stingray after that. Terrifying. If that guy got killed by one, I just had right. a chance. So, yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, <laughs> we haven't talked about religion yet. <sighs> I'll be back next time. I'll be prepared. (laughs) Okay. I'll study up on my theology. Uh, Don't worry about that. You're you're fine. All right. So, uh, James, what do we have planned for the rest of the week? Well, tomorrow Tomorrow, we're going to be talking Buckeye Furnace Fall Festival. That's right. Yes. And that is always a big one that they do and a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you haven't been out, uh, you need to check it out because it's a good time. So. I think Andy's playing out there. Andy Milliken. Uh, yeah. Yep. Is he? Seems like he yes. usually does. Yes, he is. And there's one other band that should be written on the flyer you have right there. He... Sour Mash String Band. Sour Mash String Band. Yep. So there you go. Yep. Lots and lots of good stuff. Be a lot of fun. Food. All kind of entertainment. Um... Who's coming on? Auctions. Uh, Jim Meacham will be on oh, okay. tomorrow. Okay. Yep. We'll talk about that. And another flyer you got there, Jim, uh, Park's Edge is going to have a holiday market. We're yep. looking for vendors. So if you are a you know craft vendor or something like that and are interested in being a vendor at the Park's Edge holiday market, that information is online. You know, and, and I was talking with Karina about this last night, and I thought this was kind of a good touch. The The... You don't have to be holiday themed to set up for this. Like it doesn't have to right. be that you make Christmas wreaths or whatever. Like whatever you sell, if you make jewelry or you make whatever, um, you're more than welcome to set up. And it will be at Park's Edge. And that is December 4th, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And um, in talking with Karina about it yesterday, there's going to be it's going to be fun. It's not going to be stuffy or anything like that. It's right. going to be a lot of fun. 
So yeah, if you're interested in being a vendor, yep. information on how to sign up is up now. And we'll have, you know, more information about regular attendees closer to the event. Correct. That's right. And you can sign up at enjoyparksedge.com slash holiday market, or just give them a ring and they'll hook you up. Awesome. So, yeah, that sounds like fun. And uh, I was thinking about something. Cre- what can we sell that's creative? We'll have to come up with something. Yeah. We could sell jokes. <laughs> <gasps> maybe I could Maybe I could do the kiss my ass booth and that. <laughs> Where I bring my little donkey and people can get out of You'd have to grab your ass booze and... I, I, I mean, why not? All right, on that note, uh, I don't that know. Tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> evidently people do that for free, so... <laughs> All what right. you get when you invite me over here. I know, you. I know. <laughs> okay, well, have a great day, everyone. <laughs> And we'll be right back here tomorrow to talk about the Buckeye Furnace Fall Festival. And that's going to be a fun one. So um, thanks for watching and we'll see you then.